Frank Maloney, how are you going to win the selection? By canvassing, by going out here, and by preaching um, what I believe in, and hopefully what the people of Barnes believe in. If you look at the results in the past, UKIP's miles and miles and miles behind the BNP, the Conservatives, Labour, you have huge ground to make up, don't you? Yeah, it's a big challenge, but it's a, you know, it's a challenge that I want to do, it's a challenge that I'm fully committed to do, and you know, I've been putting all my efforts, all my heart into doing it, and I don't do anything at half measures, and I'm going into it in the belief that I, I can really see for you. Why can a party that only got a thousand or so votes, if you look at the boundary changes at the last election, make any sort of impact at this election? Because I believe politics is also now about personality, about people and relations to people. I can relate to the people of um, you know, I am a Londoner, um, I've gone through the problems they've gone through, I've got young children growing up in today's society, and, and I know what they're going through. Um, I'm a little bit luckier than most of them, you know, I've had a few breaks in life, and I want to give something like that. And, I believe I do. I'm giving something back to Britain, back to the community. And are you directly targeting BNP voters? No, I'm targeting any voters, any, any voters that are dissatisfied with their present party. I mean, I look at Margaret Hodge, she's been there for 16 years. I've walked to Mary Barton and I think to myself, if she's been there for 16 years, what the hell has she done? And the place has deteriorated. So someone's got to go in, someone's got to point this out. And somehow you've got to be able to convince these people that there is a future and that we can change the park. Your party's now saying it's going to ban Muslims from wearing the veil if it gets its way. Isn't UKIP just trying to be as right wing as the BNP to try and get some of their votes? No, I don't think so. I think the majority of British people would like to see the veil banning. Um, you know, I've got two young children and you know, we've all banned my chapel as I took them and I saw all the Asian people out shopping. And it sort of scared them. They said, Dad, why do they have to wear this sort of costume? Why do people have to cover up their faces? It is quite intimidating. And I think if you, if you put it across the right way, in public, I, I think they should in their own houses, if they want to wear them, that's fine. I mean, it's not a religious issue. They try to make it a religious issue. So, Muslims should be banned from wearing the veil because it frightens your children? No, not because it frightens my children. I've used that as an example. I just think it is an intimidating tactic. Intimidating piece of clothing. You know, it's not. It's not um, an everyday sort of situation, is it? I mean, it, it, it changes the face of Britain. The BNP agrees with you on that. Are you uncomfortable at all that UKIP's policies are moving towards the BNP? No. Are we saying the French president of the BNP are right wing extremists because he wants to ban it in France? Are we saying the Swiss government are right wing extremists because they want to ban it in Switzerland? Let me ask you about some of the things you said in the past. You're talking about uh, gay people. You said you had a problem with gay people openly flaunting their sexuality. Is that something you still believe? No, I mean, that was made in about 2003, 2004, when I first wanted to stand. You know, I am a boxing promoter. I know how to get attention. I said something that would draw attention. And it, it got me what I wanted. It got me in notice. It got me up there in the press. So it worked for me. I don't have a problem with gay people. I've never really had a problem with gay people. So you were saying things just to get attention whether you believe them or not? At that time I said that because I didn't know. I no one advised about it, no one had to be serious. So I made a statement, which was a little bit wrong at the time to make a problem. I hold my hand up to that and I admit it to that. So are you going to be making full stakes in this election to try and get published? No, I've learned my own mistakes. Tell me about the letter the BNP uh, sent to Nigel Farage about this constituency. Yeah, uh, they sent a letter to Nigel suggesting that if um, UKIP stand against them in um, Barclays, they will put a uh, representative against Nigel. And they will start a campaign. Well, that then threatening, if you like, to stand a candidate in a constituency, that seems a perfectly appropriate thing for a political party to do. Yeah, but why, didn't they, uh, why then are they asking you us not to stand one in Barclays? What they're saying is, we don't stand in bargain, they won't stand there. This is a fair democratic country, you know. Let the people decide on the policies they want and who they want to represent. And if someone is a barking voter is watching this, why should they vote for you rather than the BNP? Because I believe I bring honesty to, to their constituency. I will work for the constituency and I will be there. Uh, and as I said before, I know the problems these people have been through. Um, and I know the problems they're going through at the moment. It's, it's about who, who they believe in and who they want. I mean, it's, they will have their say at the, at the votes we've got. I can't tell them to vote for me. If they believe in me, they will vote for me. If they believe in the BNP, they will vote for the BNP. I will accept the will of the people.
And what's your view of Nick Griffin, for example? What do you think? Um, no comment. No, nothing to say about one of your opponents. You have nothing to say about one of your opponents. No, it's it's he has his belief, I have my beliefs. Um, and we just see at the end of the day who the people believe. And what about Margaret Watt? Um, I think she's got to look hard because she's been here for 16 years. She's seen the state of parking, she's just deteriorated. She's seen the average family being driven out of there. Um, she's got a lot to answer for. And again, if the people believe in and they want to continue the way they're going, they'll vote for it. they want to change, they'll change their votes. And as a, a relative newcomer to politics, I've to for some people, um, have, have you always voted UKIP for as long as UKIP's been there? Who have you voted for in the past? I've always voted for UKIP since I joined the party in 2001. And have you ever been tempted by the BNP's message? Have you ever been tempted to support them too? No, I did vote once for the way you live, just as a protest vote against something else that they were talking to do in my career. Okay. Uh, just, just finally, what would be your pitch to voters here? If they're thinking, why should I vote for this man? Why should I vote for this party? Why, why should they vote you in this coming election? Why should they vote for you in this constituency? I think over the next 12 weeks they will see why they should vote for me. I will spend a lot of time in the, in the constituency. I will work with the constituency. I will be there to answer their problems, discuss their problems with them, and I will bring their ideas into Parliament that they want and the dreams they want. You know, I will, the idea of a local MP is to work with people locally, work with local businesses, and that's what I'll be doing. So what sort of ideas, what sort of policies? Tell me three things that you deliver for this area. One improvement in homes, one is to make sure there's a future for their children, and two is to make sure there's jobs there for everybody. And that, how would you do that? Well, um, as the time tells, you know, we are now in putting a team into place to go from bargaining to check everything, to see what has to be looked at and the priority we have to take. So once, once my team finish that, then we will start addressing these issues. That's great. And if I just ask you to stand there, we'll just get a set up shot of the two.